So to be honest, I don't really know what I'm supposed to do on some of these regular season post-game reactions, but you know, it was a moment. Steph Curry had 62 points and given how the first couple games of this season have gone for Steph and the idea of, oh, Steph Curry exposed or whatever, it felt good for Steph to just have this moment here. And I mean, really, Steph looked like 2016 first 20 games or whatever, Steph, where he basically just broke basketball. My favorite shots were the last two because the the pull-up three that he had to give himself 59, that was pretty far out there. And then the one at 62 was a classic Warriors get it to the hot guy sort of thing. We've seen them do that with Clay, and Steph got his turn on that one. Was it not symbolic that Draymond was the one who threw him the ball in the very last shot? Perhaps uh, an idea of like, oh, this is what the Warriors need, you know, Draymond back for this team to really be something. And for what it is, I mean, they're 3-3 three and three right now, and it's better than not being 3-3, three and three, of course. But yeah, this was just a peak of his powers type of Steph Curry game, and it was fun to see. And I do think if we can sort of stretch it out to thinking about how they can play, it just might have to be more of this, just more simple, aggressive Steph Curry, where he's jacking up threes out of isos and doing step backs, because that that was a big part of it. I mean, there were definitely some of the threes tonight that came within the flow of the Warriors' offense, him moving off the ball, but there were quite a few where it was also like, just give me the ball and let me do something. Is it possible that Steph has become underrated as a ball handler? Because he's always had moves, it's just he was so about the off-ball movement that he oftentimes wouldn't really need to bust out some crazy move, you know? Whereas in this one, again, you know, pick and rolls and isos and that sort of thing. I guess I can transition this into this conversation that's been happening lately on Twitter, where it's basically just the bash Steph Curry hour, and and so it felt good for Steph to... uh get this one and make all those people stop talking for a night. Granted, they're probably still going to be making some tweets, but I mean, I don't know. It's tough because in one sense, it's like, yeah, there were definitely Warriors fans who would be kind of toxic towards LeBron. Any opportunity they got, not all the Warriors fans, of course, but we've all seen a few of them on Twitter over the years. And For those people specifically to then come around and be like, well, Steph Curry doesn't have any help, you don't really get to do that. However, there's also been a lot of, like, Steph Curry secretly not amazing or whatever, can't do it without great players around him. I mean, listen, man, his last four games, it's 36, 31, 26, and then 62. It seems like he's doing all right with the talent around him. The first two games were a disaster, no doubt about that, but it's just like, come on, man. First off, there's this thing of like, well, Steph Curry couldn't carry a team the way LeBron can. Yeah, no crap. No one could carry a team like LeBron. Or at least, whatever. There's probably specific examples. Hakeem's carry job with the first Houston team. That's pretty damn impressive. All of MJ's years were carry jobs. Steph Curry is not LeBron. That's fine, okay? But then there's this thing about, well, Harden in, I believe, 2015 carries a Houston team to like 56 wins. And now people want to compare that to this Warriors team and look at that as like, oh, Steph Curry can't carry a team. He needs great players around him. First off, Steph Curry was in the NBA before Kevin Durant showed up on his team, just by the way. Um, Number two, that 2015 Rockets team could actually play defense. They were 8th in defensive rating. You know how much Steph Curry would kill to have a defense that isn't horrible around him right now? I mean, Harden at least had 29-year-old Dwight Howard for 41 games. He had Patrick Beverly, Trevor Ariza. Josh Smith may have still resembled a solid defender at that point. Corey Brewer could defend. Monty Yunus when he was looking like a promising NBA player, although I don't remember if he was a defensive guy like that. The point being is you cannot compare that to Andrew Wiggins not knowing how to rotate on defense or James Wiseman being a rookie center. I mean, yeah, Wiseman's looked okay so far, but he's still a rookie. He's still going to make mistakes. So you're asking me, could Steph Curry carry that Houston team the way Harden did? Yes, because if you gave 
First off, what age are we assuming Steph Curry is for this carry job? I don't know. Harden was 25, so can I put 25-year-old Steph Curry in there? Sure, why not? So if I put 25-year-old Steph Curry onto that 2015 Houston team that James Harden carried to 56 wins with a whole bunch of injuries and stuff, and I give Steph an eighth-ranked defense and I tell him, hey, fly around off the ball and go off and shoot as many threes as you want to, yes, he carries that team the same way that Harden does. And I'm going to say the same exact thing about the 2017 Thunder, where Westbrook was the MVP and he carried this horrible roster. Look, I do think Westbrook was the rightful MVP this season, regardless of what OKC seeding was, because he really was that great. That being said, they were also 10th in defense. The same thing applies. Give Steph Curry a good defense, let him go off. Yeah, they're going to win just like they did with Westbrook that season. I feel like I'm in the Matrix when I see some of the Steph Curry animosity. This idea if he can't carry a team. This isn't even a team. It's Andrew Wiggins. Wiggins has been a negative his whole career. It's freaking. it's a rookie center versus Steven Adams and Dwight Howard. Two of the most solid defensive bigs that we've seen in the last whatever years. Give me a break. Steph Curry's fine. Anyway, that's the video.